Global Eco Energy are your renewable energy specialists. Working with Eco4 and Home Energy Scotland to offer grants and funding, we specialize in heat pump, solar and battery installations, as well as internal, external and cavity wall insulation. Prices starting from as little as £4,995 for solar PV and from £8,995 for a heat pump installation. For a free quote, free survey and to find out more about grants and funding options, call 0800 The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 Let's go! Good evening, this is Paul Cooney with Andy Walker and Mark Guidi. It's five o'clock. Happy New Year, everyone. The headlines this afternoon as St Mirren Celtic kicks off just a few seconds ago. Nil-nil at the new Love Street, the Smyza Stadium. So Rangers, a win this afternoon. 3-1 against Kilmarnock. So it's back to just five points at the top of the table as the ball is in the back of the net for Celtic and it looks as though Dyson Maida has scored within the first 60 seconds Andy Walker what an astonishing start from Celtic I mean it's O'Reilly again with a pass into the, the, the path of Dyson Maida he's in behind and all of a sudden before 60 seconds are up Celtic are in the lead I thought this might be a tough game for Celtic but you can't ask for a better start than that They've got a good goalkeeper, St Mirren and Hemmings, but you look at the way he's taken it. One touch to control, he's inside the box and gets it under Hemming. An astonishing start. What a start, Mark Guidi. And Celtic would look for that after Rangers winning 3-1 this afternoon. Well, yeah, that just calms everything down for Celtic. Oh, still wouldn't rule St Mirren out, Paul, but uh, a lovely pass. Well, really, <clears throat> excuse me, Scott Tanders switched off a little bit. Maida's taking advantage and a lovely finish uh, from him. There is a, a VAR check going on, but the goal has been given. So Celtic one up inside, 60 seconds. Perfect start, as you say, Paul, on the back of Rangers with a, a comfortable 3-1 this afternoon at Ibrox. Other headlines this afternoon. Well, Motherwell, late Late, late own goal, Dennis, uh, Dennis Bevis Mugabe ended up 2-2 at Hebs. Hearts a 2-1 win against Livingston. That game's just finished. Aberdeen back on song this afternoon, 3-0 against Ross County. Double for Jamie McGrath and a goal for Majofsky. Dundee St. Johnson off because of the weather overall. Andy, so uh, I was going to say your prediction for tonight's game for St. Mirren Celtic. Yeah, I thought it was going to be difficult for Celtic, but that's the perfect start. I mean, St Myrna have been in really good form to, to see them win up at uh, Petaudry against Aberdeen. Uh, I thought it was really impressive. That, that was a really good showing because they'd gone off the boil a bit um, recently. And Celtic, I mean, I think uh, they handled the pressure really well against Rangers to come out on top, to play so well, but they were by far the better side. And... Um, you know, I think they, this could have been a difficult one for them, but so far it's uh, it started well for them. Headlines in the Championship, Wraith Rovers, they're still playing at the moment. Uh, they're 2-1 up against uh, Dunfermline in the Derby. The other Glasgow Derby was won by Partick Thistle, 3-2 against Queen's Park. Queen's Park had fought back. Uh, Morton, a big win for them this afternoon at the Till of the Bank, 3-0 against Ayr. A big win for Dundee United, top of the table, 3-0 against Arbroath. And Airdrie, a win for them uh, for 2-0 against Inverness Cali Thistle. So, Mark, a lot to take in today. That's, uh, well, for Motherwell, uh, one, a 2-2, two, two, they'd be disappointed. I know you're just keeping an eye on Sky, where the only change, I believe, in the Celtic team is Navrosky, who is in for Stephen Welsh. He was unlucky, wasn't he? Yeah, the Stephen Welsh getting that injury um, after half an hour or so on um, on Saturday. It was, it was the, the incident that Lynn uh, Dezos goes clean through and then makes a hash of it in front of goal. But uh, Navrosky... I like the look of Navrosky, um, Paul. No, he's only had uh, fleeting um, kind of games, um, uh, glimpses of him here and there. But um, I think he is um, a really good centre half. But I have to say, I thought as well on Saturday, and just overall for for assessing the first half of the season before we come to the winter break, Paul Liam Scales has been absolutely outstanding. Yeah. I mean, he, he really has the different partners that he's had week after week, having to move around, and he has been the one constant. Uh, and that defence and I, I think he deserves a, a hell of a lot of credit Shall we take our first call of the new year Happy New Year and it's Laurie in Denison Hello Laurie uh, Paolo good evening uh, and let me also wish uh, the panellists uh, all the best uh, for 2024 Thank you very much and to you Thanks Laurie, Laurie. very kind Thanks, Laurie. Andy Walker Mark Woody Paul Cooney reciprocate uh, So what are you uh, thinking? Guys uh, I would like to say first and foremost I was delighted 
naturally and obviously as a Celtic fan, uh, they were defeated Rangers uh, on Saturday. Uh, a very entertaining game. I was present, of course, being a season ticket holder. Uh, however, I'm not going to get carried away. I was delighted with the three points. Uh, I thought the three goals were all superb. Celtics two and indeed the inch perfect free kick by James Taverni. Uh, I think I'm so delighted and uh, happy especially for Brendan Rodgers. I think he had been coming under uh, an awful lot of criticism. Yeah. Uh, some fair, uh, some unjustifiable, but uh, he vindicated himself. Uh, and I now hope that those who have been on his back will forget all about Ange Posikoglu and realise and recognise that uh, Brendan is in his second stint as Celtic manager and let's get behind him fully. Uh, I don't think that it was uh, a season-defining uh, moment. Laurie, I need to jump in. Celtic have gone two up. Matt O'Reilly's got his arm raised, so six minutes gone. St Mirren nil, Celtic two. Yeah, Mark. they just they blew yeah. the St Mirren defence apart. Lovely passing and movement there, Laurie. And, uh, you know, uh, O'Reilly just takes his time. He could have got a goal just seconds uh, before it. And there he is, just comes in the box, weaves his way through, and, uh, and then receives a, a lovely uh, pass from Paolo Bernardo, and he slots it through the legs. Um, of the St Mirren goalkeeper 2-0 Celtic after 6 minutes Andy Walker well I just loved the the turn there from Paolo Bernardo he got away from Gogic inside the box I mean that's really skillful and that just allows Matt O'Reilly to have the 2-3 yards of space and yet again he's made it count he's going through the, the goalkeeper's legs and it's uh, I mean it's 100 miles an hour that Celtic are playing at six, not even 7 minutes gone and it's 2-0. Yep. First goal came in 54 seconds. Second one, 5 minutes, 53 seconds. And Laurie, that brings us to your point. To the Celtic fans, give the manager a break. Absolutely. Uh, Paul, I've been saying that since the start of the season. Uh, listen, uh, I'm totally respectful and appreciative of what Ange Postecoglou has done. However, that's past tense. Yeah. We've got to deal with the situation in the here and now. And as I've said in this show previously, on a number of occasions... If Ange Postecoglou had to go, which he did, uh, we could not had could have had rather a better replacement uh, available than Brendan. I'm, I'm so, so so privileged and so proud as a Celtic fan that he's back. But uh, like I say, I'm not going to get carried away, uh, okay. Paul, because Rangers have got two games in hand. They won emphatically uh, today. Uh, I just think, it, in terms of Scottish football. Uh, what a fantastic second half of the, the season. Uh, got, my only disappointment today was that my wee wife, Karen, uh, who's a Kilmarnock supporter, and all our brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews are Kilmarnock fans, that they came unstuck uh, at Hybrox. <laughs> uh, but uh, delighted, absolutely delighted. It's the manner in which we won on Saturday. And uh, two or three players, it was a team effort, of course. Callum McGregor showed why he is a uh, captain fantastic. Uh, Liam Skills, again, immense. Uh, and Bernardo, you know what? I thought perhaps he was a bit player, mm -hmm. but uh, he scored that goal with consummate ease on Saturday. Uh, what a, a wonderful strike. I, and he is such a talented, talented player. I watched him there uh, in his participation in that second goal. So I think it's come up in the Celtics Garden. I'll finish by saying that uh, I'm disappointed that Maida and Hatati have got to go uh, on Japanese duty, but yeah. Celtic knew that. I'm also delighted that Kyogo, of the trio, is remaining behind as Celtic. What an amazing goal that was uh, that he scored on Saturday, and I'm hoping, uh, and Mark and I have this, had this discussion before, uh, and I hope now Celtic uh, will dip uh, into the transfer funds uh, and sign uh, some new players, but I couldn't be more delighted as a Celtic supporter and season tick holder tonight. The panel starts. Yep. Andy, what would you say about Kyogo's goal at the weekend? Well, I'm I'm amazed, a bit like Laurie, I'm amazed he's not going on international duty, but it's obviously a big bonus for Celtic. His goal, I mean, we spoke about it last week, the fact that he always seems to score on the big occasion, especially against Rangers, and that goal was right out of the top drawer. And yet again, it was, when when you look at the build-up to it, it was really special play from O'Reilly just to get away from his marker. 
fire it into Kyogo. Maybe a bit, bit surprised that he was given a couple of yards, um, you know, outside the box. He didn't have anyone uh, really close to him, and all he needed to do was just shift it on his left. And the strike was absolutely wonderful. Butland couldn't do anything about that. So um, I'm just wondering how he'll how he'll go about, you know, being the snub from the international mm. team. He's clearly. A, a guy with a lot of ability. He's scoring big goals for Celtic. He obviously wants to play international football. I wonder if he'll just see it as a chance to... Uh, I'll show them what they're missing mm-hmm. and, and and try and build up his goal tally. And Mark, what would you say about Callum McGregor? I see the manager afterwards, Brendan Rodgers, said he's a different level. Yeah, and actually, Paul, what, his ability is fantastic. He, he dictated a lot of the play. Ibrox from Celtic won 1-0, won but I don't think... Um, uh, Michael Beal handled that situation well in terms of tactically uh, for Rangers and then he absolutely bossed it um, mm. on, on, on Saturday afternoon Although I was surprised that Cantwell was given the role because if you look at Cantwell you know he's, he's a very talented footballer but he's not the kind of guy that I would look at to go and trust to do a job on the Celtic captain somebody who, who dictates the flow of the game so I didn't think Clement called that one um, correctly however um, McGregor was built but I love his leadership Paul He's quiet, and when he when he speaks and he he does his media duties often, he does it really really well. Doesn't say it out of place, but also educates the the club and the supporters and under media in terms of what's going on um, inside. So he's perfect for Brendan Rodgers. Brendan alluded to um, after the game. And I've said many times in this program, Brendan was desperate to take him to Leicester City and would have paid twenty million quid to do so, but Celtic didn't sell, couldn't sell because they just sold Kieran Tierney a couple of weeks. Um, prior to that so Brendan had to uh, had to back off but that's what Brendan thought of him wow. five years ago uh, they'd have given Celtic 20 million quid uh, for Callum McGregor so he's, he's outstanding and thoroughly deserved to, to skip a Celtic to that uh, victory on Saturday Andy what we're missing meantime Celtic almost getting goal number three yeah well they're trying to play it wide they're trying to get Palma into the game I think we've seen a lot of Maeda uh, just in the opening 10-12 minutes I think it's a bit of a shell shock for Stephen Robinson for the uh, St Mirren manager he thought his team would have been able to compete I mean I think what you want to do when Celtic come to town is you know try and stay with them for as long as possible and St Mirren have shown this season that they're they're very capable of that but Celtic are blowing them away and uh, I don't think it's the end of the scoring I think Celtic will look to I don't think they'll they'll hang on their rest on the laurels here. Is it Mern on the attack at the other end, but the ball has gone wide, so still 2-0. What about Paolo Bernardo? Laurie praised him quite rightly. I mean, his goal as well, Andy. He took it really well. And what did you think of his performance? Yeah, I thought he was terrific. And I think it's the type of goal that makes everyone, just the perception of him, he, he, he's given a new level of respect. And in much the same way as what, what are Celtic getting from Rio Hatati when he signed? And then he scored two goals against Rangers in the February when Celtic won 3-0 and the perception of him immediately changed. Here's a guy that can play football, here's a guy that can play really good passes but he can score goals on the big occasion and and, and lead the team and I think that's what you're getting from uh, Bernardo and when you look at the two that he's playing alongside in the middle of the park, I mean, arguably Celtic's two best players this season, certainly O'Reilly, but you, you would think at this stage of the season we're, we're, we're halfway through. Callum McGregor has been just as influential, if not more. He, he's maybe not getting the amount of goals that O'Reilly's got and that always uh, grabs people's attention. But his general influence on games, I think it's there for all to see. I think Bernardo, Paul, Celtic want to do the deal permanently. It's between five and six million at the end of the season, which is similar to the, to the, to the Jota fee, was it, the deal that they've got in place uh, with Benfica. Given his age and Brendan Rodgers significantly, he always makes a point uh, of saying so. If it's the case, he wants to learn. He wants to improve. He's a good young pro. Uh, and obviously he's got the ability to handle the big, big occasion, as he showed on Saturday. So at five, six million pounds approximately, uh, I think that's a deal that Celtic should look to do all day long. Laurie, thanks very much for calling. We hope you have a great 2024, this is the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy, Paul Cooney with Mark Guidi 
and Andy Walker. Lots of Rangers fans in the car now heading home. And a win for Rangers, 3-1 against Kilmarnock this afternoon. Ross McCausland got the first goal in the first half. Uh, Abdullah Sima made it uh, 2-0 right on half time. Danny Armstrong scored a penalty for Kilmarnock in the second half. Two minutes later, Todd Cantwell popped up to make it 3-1 for Rangers. So it's back to eight points. And Mark, that was a big win for Rangers this afternoon because they were unbeaten yeah. until the Celtic game. Kilmarnock have been on form, started well today. Yeah. I think they, um, you know, they, they had a lot of the play. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a more than decent win for Rangers. That is Kilmarnock made life very difficult yep. uh, for, for Rangers, um, Paul. Uh, young McCausland getting on the score sheet I thought uh, in glimpses on Saturday he was Rangers most <clears throat> excuse me dangerous player so yeah a really good one it was important for Rangers to, to finish before the winter break on a high of the three points to put Saturday's obviously huge disappointment uh, behind them and now get stuck into the transfer window Paul go and see what they can do they've obviously brought in Fabio Silva already I believe came off the bench to make his debut um, this afternoon and then I think what has to be done though Paul uh, if you're Philippe come on he's going to have to be absolutely ruthless mm -hmm. in terms of how he shapes his squad up um, because they're in the title race even Celtic will win today but Rangers are, are, are bang in it and uh, he has to go and be ruthless because too many of those players can't beat Celtic too many of those players have cost previous Rangers managers their jobs and if Philippe Clermont can't find a way to beat Celtic he'll become the next managerial casualty Need, and he needs it with different players I mean the yeah. one take I, I, I picked up when, when he actually came into the club and he was so positive and we all know he's been very calm and measured and he's he started really well but the one line was remember I'm not a magician mm -hmm. so he, he needs different players I don't know what Rangers intentions are with, with uh, more signings in the January window but the only way you'll improve is to, to get some of the suspect players away and get get guys in that he knows and that he can trust and that costs money it was a good line I'm not a magician but he had what 16 games undefeated mm. only a couple of draws in there but I mean I do remember saying you know Michael Beale had a really good start he was yeah. undefeated for months at Rangers until it came to the Celtic game Paul you've got to beat Celtic yeah. they're the champions if you can't beat Celtic you ain't going to win the league highly unlikely and Rangers are going to have to find a way in at least one of the next two old firm games uh, next one's at Ibrox start of April and then you'll get the, the one back at Celtic Park after the split, the evidence is there. The last time Rangers beat Celtic in a meaningful game, Scottish Cup semi-final, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was a manager. So if you can't find a way to beat Celtic and too many of these players, for whatever reason, are not up to the task. Yeah, Motherwell, Kilmarnock, Dundee, happy days, lovely, wonderful, keeps you in touch. But ultimately, and Philippe Clermont will know it and his staff will know it, there's a few of them, not all of them, but there's a few of them that aren't up to it. And by the way, you ain't going to win a title. You ain't going to get anywhere near it when Cyril, Cyril Dessers is your number nine. And as much as I think the guy really gives his all, yeah. works his, his, his socks off, uh, speaks really well, he's a kind of guy that I'd really like to see him doing well because I think really good professional, but he's miles off at Paul. I wonder where Fabio Silva will play. I mean, I've seen him play on, on the, on the right-hand side for Wolves, but he has played games through the middle. He doesn't have an outstanding goal-scoring uh, return. But he's someone who's capable of playing through the middle. I wonder how Clement will fit him into the team. That's a really good point. Abdul Asima is off after today. He's off to the African Nations tournament. 15 goals he's got for Rangers. Not an out, an out striker as well. We haven't seen much of Danilo. We know the story with Desers. But the club have said, and Barry says often in this programme, he reckons there will be someone else coming, not just uh, Silva. And could it be Lauren Shanklin? So a lot of people think Shanklin will be coming. He scored this afternoon. Missed yeah. a penalty again. It was saved. Yeah. But And, and yeah. then I, I read yeah. all the speculation about the possibility of Josh Doig, who went away and played in Italy. He was at Hibs, of course, for, for some time. Really good, uh, promising, a lot of potential left back. And I don't know if Rangers are looking to make a change there. They obviously paid a lot of money for Yilmaz, but... Um, you know, more often than not, it wasn't the case at the weekend, but more often than not, if there's a big game, it tends to be Barisic who plays. Sure is. Celtic on the charge again. I was going to take a break, but no, we'll bring in Sean on the line as well. Still 2 0 Celtic. 3 1 Rangers this afternoon. Sean, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, team. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a good game today. Um, yeah. I would like to have seen Silver come around a wee bit earlier, but. Yeah. He looked uh, all right in the first, I think he won about 20 minutes, the, yeah. the game was more or less done. So Where I, did he play, Paul? Uh, Sean. Sean. 
I think he was up front, mate. Up and shoot. Well, he was run. He was looked like he was there just behind maybe the striker, to be honest. Right. But I, he, he played, he played all right. But twenty minutes, um, you're not really getting to see what he really is. I would have brought him on in the fiftieth minute, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope he's going to be all right. But I think Rangers need to go and get Shanklin this week um, <laughs> to have a chance. Because see, Dessers, Dessers, I think tried tries, but I think look at look when he be, was playing uh, the other day. Yeah. I don't even think he really had a shot. He was just he was trying to walk the ball in the net, and you can't do that against teams like Celtic. Sean, what did you make of the performance on Saturday? Two one Celtic. Oh, well, Celtic deserved to win the game. Um, Celtic, Celtic turned up. Rangers played all right at moments, the, the young boy, but uh, what a strike for Tavernier. But yeah. over the 90 minutes, uh, the best team won the game. And you want to see a striker, Lon Shanklin, quite a lot of people on yeah, the socials I like, here. I like to see yeah. Shanklin 100%. Do you think he will yeah. come? I think. I tried to push Barry on I it. I think so. He, yeah, I thought Barry was uh, edging towards that as well, Mark. You were on with him. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, Rangers need to go and agree a fee with Hearts. And it's doable. Yeah. It's doable, but don't forget, um, in special circumstances, James, Ander- James Anderson will step in to help out Hearts. And if it's mean of, of, a, of a new contract for Lauren Shanklin, put to bed anything. Mm-hmm. Even, if, even if he signs a new deal, Paul, and they sell him in the summer, you fatten him up, you, you give him. Because Shanklin, would do, yeah, of course, the pool of Rangers, I think, would, would be massive for him. Of course it would, if the clubs agreed a fee. However, what kind of game time is he going to get? He's five months away from... At this moment in time, you would have him in the Scotland squad going to Germany. Who knows what the case will be five months. So there's a lot to uh, to to weigh up. But certainly if you're Rangers, I would go and try and get him. Go and see if there's a deal to be done. I, I wonder how much heart, Hearts would take. I mean, if you if you sell Shankland, I, I don't think you're getting European football. You look at the, the goals that he has scored for Hearts up until now. They are the team that are in third place. This new European structure that you've got next season, it's much... Uh, more beneficial financially so Hearts will look at that and think if we ha- don't have Lauren Shankland we've, it's unlikely they would finish third the level of competition I think is too great so money always talks but you do wonder how what, what the deal would be if it was to be done Sean, good call, thanks very much it's 25 past 5 almost Celtic are 2 up this afternoon at Paisley, 22 minutes gone The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs Let's go Let's go, Happy New Year everyone from Paul Cooney Mark Guidi, Andy Walker and executive producer James Santa's been good to him you can tell by the, the clobber <laughs> looking even better, if you're just tuning in Celtic are two up at the moment at St Mirren 24 and a half minutes gone this afternoon Rangers winning 3-1 against Kilmarnock, Dundee St Johnson per Spawned. Motherwell ended up 2-2. They were a goal down, then they were 2-1 up, and right at the end, an own goal. 2-2 at Hebs, but not the worst result. Andy, one of your old teams. Hearts a win at Livingston. Livy did get a goal, but they were two down. Lauren Shankland, is it one of his last games? Could he be on his way during the window? He scored. He missed a penalty again, two in a week, but then he scored which ended up being the winner for Hearts. And Aberdeen back on form, and my goodness, they needed to be this afternoon, 3-0 against Ross County. And in the Championship, big wins there. Just checking, is that full-time at Wraith Rovers? I'll give it to you in a moment or two. Dundee United, of course, doing really well. A big win for them this afternoon. I'll come back to that in a second or two. Kevin is on the line. Happy New Year, Kevin. Happy New Year, Paul. Happy New Year, uh, Mark and Andy as well. Happy New Year, Kevin. Thank you. you, Kevin. Um, it's just it's just a couple of points. The, yeah. the first one, um, I've not been managed to go on because after the Rangers, uh, the, the old Firm game, yeah. a wee bit tender as you can surely sympathise. <laughs> all that um, iron, all that iron brew, yeah. <laughs> all that yeah. iron brew, aye. Uh, but the, the the first point before I go into the game was is made a, a wee question for Andy actually. Um, Andy, if you and I'm not, I don't know if Celtic are in, but I've been a big advocate. It was Paul will tell you that I wanted I wanted Celtic to sign Shanklin. Yeah. But if you were in Shanklin's shoes and they both came in for you, what one would you sign for? What um, one would, would make more sense? Yeah. <laughs> if you're asking me, I would always go to Celtic. But um, you know, you just wonder just what, what do what do what do Celtic want in a in a new striker? What what are Celtic's goals? What are their ambitions? Obviously. They, they still want to dominate domestically, but I think they want to do a lot better in Europe. Is Lauren Shanklin going to score you goals 
in Europe? Who who does Brendan Rodgers like to have as a striker? When I've seen Brendan Rodgers' teams play, he always likes someone who's you know quick, fast, mobile, but you know big and strong. He had Dembele in a, an earlier time at uh, at Celtic, and he was a a really key player. I know that. Um, he, he had a variety of strikers at, at Leicester one of them Jamie Bardi who was just really really quick and a, a great goal scorer but is, is Lauren Shanklin going to do it for Celtic when you look at what they want to do I, I have no doubt Lauren Shanklin goes to any other club in, in Scotland in the uh, the top three four clubs he'll score goals because he's done it and he knows his way to go I was at the game the other day Kevin where he uh -huh. um, he scored a beautiful goal against Ross County it was just the control and the pass just guiding it inside the post got uh, got Hearts a point against Ross County so he does get a, a variety of goals his his goal against Hibs at Easter Road right out the top drawer his goal before that against St Mirren left foot top corner he scored for Scotland he scored at Ibrox against Rangers he scored at Parkhead against Celtic he knows his way to go but what what are Celtic looking for in a new striker potentially? And I'm not convinced it would be Lauren Shanklin. All right, cool. Yep. So I was just think yep. the guy's a goal scorer anyway. I think we need, <laughs> we need we need goals, but uh, Yeah, I, I, I think there's uh, there's obviously work to be done there, Kevin, but I think just looking at it the whole package, I, I think I think Celtic are looking for someone to, to make their mark in Europe as well, to be a threat in Europe as well and I think just someone uh, uh, who's a bit more physical um, you know a, a, a bit stronger a bit taller uh, someone who can you know occupy j not just one centre back maybe two of them and, and make space for others I think that's the type of player that Celtic might be looking for. Mark and Kevin, I'm going to ask you, see the papers today, Mark, are saying that Celtic are eyeing the Rapid Vienna winger, Nicholas Kuhn, mm -hmm. and that's been reported in a few agencies today. Mm -hmm. So they've got a few wide men, but they don't have someone like Jota, and he's never been replaced, has he? Um, no, and the, the, it was a double whammy because Abada was out injured, yeah. um, Paul, too, uh, for a while. They came off the bench on Saturday. He's on the bench today. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're certainly not replaced light with light, which is always going to be difficult given um, Jota's... Uh, ability, but yeah, I think they're probably still looking for one uh, good way. If you look at Mikey Johnson, I don't think it's going to kick on. James Forrest is getting towards the end in terms of less and less game time for Celtic, so they do need um, uh, good options. So a wide man would be there. I think a centre forward, regardless of the fact that Kyogo's now going to stay, um, he's not away uh, on uh, Japanese international duty, they still need to go and strike her. I take Andy's point about Champions League's two ways I look at that. Uh, Paul, sometimes you've got to just sign for the here and now to make sure you get into the Champions League. Yeah. So Shanklin could be somebody like that for the second half of the season where there's a title race on. It's not like Celtic are 10, 12 points clear. There's a title race on at the moment. Um, so I think you've got to be mindful and, and, and make sure you buy um, people that will get you over the line. But whether Lorne Shanklin wants to come to Celtic, whether Celtic want Lorne Shanklin... You know, we're we're linking them with Celtic and Rangers because he's a top player. He, he's under our noses, um, but maybe maybe he's happy. Maybe his uh, ideal scenario is he gets a new three-year deal at Hearts to make him the highest-paid player in the club's history. He's a captain. Who knows? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Glasgow boy see. surely <laughs> wants to come back to, if he's wanted at Ibrox or indeed at Celtic. Mayowski scored this afternoon. Is he in your thoughts, Kevin? He got the third for the Dons. Who was that? Sorry, um, Magic. Mayovsky Aberdeen Mayovsky uh, uh, Mayovsky uh, I've not seen a lot of him um, okay. but uh, he, he doesn't get me excited man. I don't think a lot of Celtic fans would uh, would, 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 would take that no. um, and if, and if gone, gone by what Andy's saying I don't think he's the kind of mobile striker or powerful striker that Brendan Rodgers would be would be looking at so no, he doesn't really get me going and, and just on Shankland just, uh, I'll make a quick point about the Rangers Celtic again but I would just also be, like to hear, say a big thank you to Chris Boyd um, for saying that Kyogo uh, isn't yeah. capable of scoring the goals that Shankland scores uh, only for Kyogo then to go and score an absolute world day against Rangers so thanks Chris that was great mate <laughs> he's, um, he's certainly getting plenty of publicity and I don't know if he's just setting himself up or whatever or I don't know, but yeah. And your final thought about the game, how big was that for you and for Celtic? I mean, do you need as many changes as you thought in January or 
What's your I still thinking? Think we to, I still think we need the changes, Paul. I don't yeah. think... Yeah. It does, the, the, the performance was really good. I think we were the dominant side for about 75 minutes out of the, the 100 or whatever. I think Celtic were the, the, better, the better side. But um, Taylor, Taylor stepped up to the plate again. He played really well, but... I still think we really, really do need a we yeah. need, do, do need a left back. Um, so uh, we need a left back, a striker. I would like another winger in as well. Um, but yeah. I thought the performance was, was was really good. Three points was massive, uh, and it's on to the new year now. And um, let's see, let's see where it takes us. What are we going to do without the football for a few weeks, Kevin? Are you <laughs> off to? I see Rangers are going to La Manga. Celtic, last I heard, were not choosing to go away. But the weather's so bad here, Mark. What's the? I said, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sure they can, can <laughs> buy it, travel, get a deal. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, at the moment, um, yeah, Brendan Rodgers um, uh, wasn't of a mind um, to go away when he was here the yeah. first time round. Obviously, they went to Dubai a couple of times, but they might change their mind. They maybe just thinks, no, I'm, I'm quite happy. Doing what we are and getting some yep. sessions in at, uh, at Lennox too. Okay, thanks very much, Kevin. Enjoy a couple of weeks. We'll speak to you after the break. Bye yeah, boys. cheers. Thank cheers, you. Kevin. Cheers, Kevin. Yeah, in the old days, Andy it would have been Jim Doll travel, our great friend Jim. <laughs> we lost a few. Been seventy in a couple of days, so yeah. I think loads of you were up there. I was going to ask you. A few people are asking about the huddle, Andy. You yeah. were there around that time, weren't you? When I was it there when it started. Yeah. It was it was really a, a Tony Mowbray um, call. I think he noticed there was some. Split in the dressing room. This, you remember this was '94. Celtic had won nothing since '89. Yeah. There was a lot of players who had played a good number of games for for the club, and but had won nothing. And there were some players who had been part of uh, successful teams. And there was just a, a bit of a split, I think, in the dressing room. And in order to try and bring everyone together, it was Tony Mowbray's idea. Um, and uh, I think it's worked really well. I mean, initially it was it was you know. The, Tony Mowbray took the first one. Paul McStay had words in because uh, he was a captain. Um, and then it was thrown around just other senior players. Mm. And it, it used to be that, that was the way of it. But I think now when you see the shots here, it's it was very much a, a Scott Brown dominated uh, huddle. It, it now looks as though Callum McGregor does it every single week. But initially when it started, it was, it was passed around. Uh, anyone want to take it today? Anyone get something to say? And... and um, I, I, it was really interesting because Tony said he wondered how long will this last mm. because obviously players come and go and they move on but this was a way just to bring the team together before kick-off and I, I think it's it's actually made uh, a bit of a connection with supporters. They they absolutely love it and they love to see their, their team getting into the huddle, coming out of it and everyone's ready to go. And you could see with the close-up on Sky how up for it and how vocal yeah. Callum McGregor was because he is normally fairly, you know, he's, he's not the loudest, but yeah. my goodness. I it, think you're seeing yeah. a different side to Callum McGregor, yeah. somebody who not only can dominate games, but he can, he can not, not dominate his teammates, but he can control them, he can guide them, he can uh, offer them a bit of criticism, he can offer them a bit of encouragement. And when you look at what he's done in the game and what he's won, he, he, he knows how to go about being successful. Mark Big Dave, has been on the socials, big Rangers fan. He's on from Spain, actually, south of Spain, saying, what about that free kick from James Tavernier? Um, has anyone, is anyone as good as James Tavernier at that precision? I mean, Joe no. Hart, there's no criticism of the keeper, is there? It was a brilliant finish. No, you've got to give all the credit to, to James Tavernier uh, for that. Put on it was a pressure moment and it got his, his, his team right back in the game down to 10 men. And got to give Rangers a lot of credit for that. And Paul, they pushed Celtic back. They, they, they played percentage football, uh, try and pick up free kicks and, and corners. And uh, and it worked. You know, OK, Joe, Joe Hart didn't really have saves to make, but they certainly had Celtic in the back foot uh, for the last 10, 12 minutes. But no, a wonderful foot. It was 117 goals. Yeah. He scored for Rangers. I mean, it's it's frightening Astonish. for a fullback. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many penalties are in there, but regardless of that, uh, you've still got to go and put the ball in the back of net. But his free kicks are very, very special. And Davy, yes, you were. Uh, I think tongue in cheek saying, yeah, there was a penalty against Rangers today, and it was Danny Armstrong who scored because they were heading for a record of um, world record. 74, 75 yeah. games, something no like that. Games. So, a penalty. so today, uh, I think is it John Beaton who was the referee. Yeah. Yep. has given a penalty and it was converted by Danny Armstrong yep cheers David enjoy it I hope you've got some sunshine there in the south of Spain we certainly don't have here <laughs> absolutely <laughs> awful isn't it Mark That's you look at, the, you look at the conditions yeah. that uh, I was going to say Love Street yeah, but it's sure. in Murn's Ground where the, it's just teeming down so uh, terrible for the 
supporters. But good on them. It's the real pitch, yeah, yeah which is brilliant, isn't it? Others should the follow. surface is the yep. surface there is really good. Who's in the stand? There any notables there? The Rodmeister, <laughs> we saw him on uh, Hugman A. He was yeah. doing the Jules Hall and I stuff. Saw, but yeah. uh, recorded in September. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's there with his son, I think. Yeah, he is indeed there yeah. watching the match uh, tonight. He's watching Celtic two up at the moment. Um, Mark, they want to get goal number three. Because at two, you know, one goal, yeah, again, yeah. it could be the, game the, on. The third yeah, one, Paul, sure. always just yeah. eases any kind of uh, nerves. You know, we, well, we were talking about that now just a minute or so ago. Rangers got it back to 2-1 on uh, Saturday and they were down to 10 men and, and it made it nervy uh, for Celtic uh, in the last few moments. So, yeah, that, I think the third one always kind of kills it. But in terms of the balance of play, Paul, on the 38th minute of the game, Celtic are very, very comfortable. And if anything should have probably scored one or two more. The, so The yeah. difference in this game, I think, is just the pace that Celtic are playing at. You're seeing the players pretty much taking one, two touches. It, it was slow for a lot of weeks and Celtic fans weren't enjoying it. But you're seeing now that they're... they're I mean, obviously, they're comfortable with the two-goal lead, but they're moving it really well, uh, using the full width of the pitch, trying to get it forward early. And time and time again, they're getting in, in behind that back three that St Mirren have yeah I've been working out the average positions well I saw it in Sky a second ago but it's gone so I'm not going to comment on it you can see Celtic dominating right where do we stand on the controversy after the game uh, and we're talking about the incident where referee said no penalty mm. with uh, Sima and of course Alistair Johnson so Rangers uh, have been demanding the audio they want to hear what was going on in VAR HQ and the audio with the referee the penalty offside rumbles on. I, I, I don't know what Rangers know or I don't know what they think has happened. It, when you watch the game, and I watched it at uh, Tyne Castle, um, obviously Nick Walsh didn't see the incident with Anthony Johnson. It was, uh, you know, he was asked to stop play. It was referred to VAR, Willie Collins and VAR. And whatever you think of Willie Collins' decision, he didn't think it was a penalty either because it was, it was done and dusted fairly mm -hmm. quickly. And if everyone thinks it's an outrageous decision, and obviously Sky were, were uh, talking about it at half time, I don't know why you have to then sort of back your own decision by showing the lines. Because that was, that was done in the second half. I mean, it's a subjective decision. You might think it's a horrific decision, but the referee say, uh, saw nothing, and then it goes to VAR, and he too apparently saw nothing or wasn't an outrageous call by Nick Walsh so it was play on so I'm, I'm interested to know what Rangers take on this is and actually I was at I had a huge bar incident at Tynecastle where I don't know if you've seen it Paul but Alan Forrest went down he went round the goalkeeper Ross Laidlaw it looked to me as though he'd been wiped out and the referee Alan Muir gave him a yellow card for simulation and when you see the replay you see that there's clear and obvious contact. I don't know what I don't know what the VAR people are sure. looking at when they can't then say to Alan Muir, "You've made a big mistake here. Just overturn it. Take that mm. yellow card away and award the penalty." So, Mark, what did you think? Willie Collum obviously thought it wasn't a clear and obvious error. Yeah. Well, I, I, I first of all, just taking the handball in isolation before we, yeah, where, sure. where we've got the knowledge that it was actually offside in the build-up. I think that's a penalty. I think Alistair Johnson's handball, uh, for me, I'd be looking for a penalty kick for that. So I get that. However, it was offside. The offside looks as though hasn't been picked up in the original original VAR check by Willie Collum, as in he's just a judge because Rangers get a goal kick. Moving on, uh, Rangers have now demanded from the SFA that the dialogue between uh, VAR and the match officials be released. Paul, I'm all for transparency. Mm, yep. yep, all for it. So... Yep. If, uh, if it's out there let's hear it but what I would say is this shouldn't be exclusive to one club no. because every manager in every club up and down our 12 clubs will have had problems this season with VAR and refereeing decisions so if we're going to do that in mid-season then every other manager who's had a gripe this season or every other club would have the right to demand and hear the dialogue and every decision that they've not been happy about so if you're going to do it now I think you need to backdate it all to the start of the season otherwise clubs need to bring this up and get it into the rules uh, for, for next season but I'm all for transparency I can understand Rangers right? all they're looking for is the, the the version of events as it happened 
which I've no problem with but you do it for one yeah. you've got to do it for them all the, the SFA won't want that they won't want to put the referees in that position that's my view and I agree with Mark transparency is great we've seen you know apparently an awful decision down south the Spurs Liverpool game yeah, sure. and yeah. not long after that certainly wasn't a day or two after it but not long we, we, we got to hear the, the audio and we got to hear where the mistake was made and actually you think people will learn from that and just as a general punter a guy who pays his money to go and watch football that's what you want to hear they made a mistake and here's where they made it they, you know there was a, a bit of confusion and all the rest of it but at least hearing it you understand what, what decisions was reached why the decision was reached albeit it was the wrong one. There was confusion and, and language. And, uh, you know, I think it would be very interesting to hear, um, you know, the referee's dialogue. And I agree, Mark, journalistically. It would be great. The more transparency there is, the better. But it can't just be in this one case. No, no it has to be. I mean, for, every every yeah. man, and just because, you know, Rangers, massive football club, massive yeah. fan base, and it's a, an old firm game, you know, that, that shouldn't make a difference because. I see every club, every manager, every player, every supporter will have had a gripe uh, with far this season. So uh, I don't believe that you should be bringing it out um, mid-season. I think these are rules that have got to be made. The start, But if you do bring it out just now for Rangers, then watch to stop Davy Martindale, Barry Robson, Brendan Rodgers, Stephen Robson. Say, well, do you remember that game? I want to hear the dialogue. So you, you potentially opening the can of worms, but I'm all for transparency. Back live at Paisley, that was a chance a moment ago, Andy, for St Mirren. Almost confusion at the back? Yeah, I think as, as soon as you play a long ball and it bounces on this surface, it's going to uh, you know, really react quickly and skid off the surface. Maybe a bit of confusion with, with Scales, Navarovsky and, and Joe Hart. Joe Hart came out of his box, but I think any defender who sees a ball in front of him and that, just clear your lines and then you can regroup. St Mirren are still on the attack with the with the, the throw in it'll be a long throw in from Taylor but they've defended these well so far two quick fire goals Mark for Celtic the first one what 54 seconds yeah yeah, yeah. lovely uh, a lovely finish um, was it Matt O'Reilly got the, the second and Maida uh, got the first goal so Celtic been very very comfortable Paul looks like a wee injury there possibly to, to Joe Hart or just a minute before uh, the interval but I think Celtic have played like a team the way they've moved the ball around as Brendan Rodgers says you know we with speed, you know, with energy. They look like a team that's just beaten Rangers, you know, as if they've really come into this on a high. The final, final game before the winter break, so like, let's have no slip-ups here today. Oh, my goodness, that is a sore <laughs> one on Joe Hart. I don't think there's any malice in it, but he has copped an absolute cracker there right in the side of the jaw. Andy? Well, I think when you look at that and you see the, 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 the player's studs into the face mm -hmm. of a goalkeeper, some people would say it's a, it's a red card. I mean, it's a ball fired into the box <laughs> and he, his studs have caught Joe Hart in the face. And is that reckless or is it dangerous? Reckless <laughs> is a yellow. Dangerous is, is obviously a, a, a red, some serious foul play. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised Joe Hart's got up. So quite he has it. Uh, yeah. yeah, They're looking at it just now, it's Olesanya who was there. When you look at it, Andy, if you're asking me, it looks... I can understand reckless. a red card for yeah, that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, reckless is, is yellow. He's been shown a yellow, but it seems as though the referee uh, has been asked to just give the, the VAR a bit of time okay. to look at it. And if if the procedure is correct, he will have to, uh, the referee will have to go over and see if he, he'll change yeah. his mind. He's given a yellow. Um, they might think this is serious foul play and he might need to give a red. I'm not sure who's on VAR at, at, at Paisley this afternoon. David Monroe is a... Yep, the match sure. referee, but uh, oof, it was a sore one. I mean, Joe, yep. you can see it there on the side of his face. He's absolutely caught a cracker. That's oh, a yeah. command. I've knocked him right out. Yeah, it was. The, uh, yeah, you could understand the red. I hope it. I generally, hope it's not red. You don't sure. want to see the because yeah. I don't. Oh, yes, he's going to. Val, have to yeah. see it. Yeah. Well, Stephen Robinson. You, you know what's going to happen yeah. now. It's yeah. going yeah. to be, be a red. It's yeah. only um, once it didn't happen. It's a, it? yeah. it's a nightmare for Stephen Robinson. Right on the stroke of half time, but I think when you see. It, the the studs the six studs yeah. are actually in his face now Joe Hart is not standing tall but I mean the nature of the, the ball that's in he has to crouch down low he's tried to punch it away two fists and he's met with six studs just in, in his cheek I can absolutely understand if this is upgraded to to a red Oof. 
That uh, does look a sore. a broken jaw. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. surprised Joe Hart's got up. Uh, and to be fair to Joe Hart, he's not tried to make a meal of it in any shape or form to get the St Mirren striker into trouble, but it's going to be a red from David Munro. Here's the here. verdict. A red. Yep. He's uh, taking out the card. He'll get rid of the yellow. And, uh, yep, he's taking his time, though. He's dramatic. He's, yeah, he knows the Ola, cameras are there. Is it yeah. Olesanya? It's Olesanya, yeah. yeah. So yellow, that, he says no. That's them down to, to 10 minutes. Uh, red card. 47 you, minutes gone. I'm yep. not sure you can argue with it. I know. Yep. But I do feel for the player. Yeah. Because I don't think he's going in intentionally. However, I, it I doesn't agree. need to be intentional. I agree, Mark. But I, I do really feel for the player because I don't think he's going in to, to, to do that. I think he's made a genuine attempt for the ball. But, my goodness, you can understand why it's a red ball. But I do feel for the St. Man player, for sure. And I agree with you. I don't know how we know, but we all felt the, what, the intent wasn't there. The trouble is, when they play it back and you see it and you see it slowed down, wow, he took it straight on the face there and to the credit of Joe Hart he didn't make a no, meal he of it he no. got back up he got there up. Yep, he he'll did. have a sore one yeah we're going to take the break in a second when he blows for half time um, and then we will yep so it's 2-0 Celtic the goal's coming in 54 seconds Maida fastest goal of the afternoon and Matt O'Reilly in 6 minutes so oh, this could be 5 or 6 now to yeah. Celtic. this, this will just six. be yeah. uh, wave after wave of attack really crucial that Celtic try and keep a, a lot of width to the game stretch that that back three will now go to a back four, back five, surely, because it's uh, uh, exactly what Mark's saying there. The last thing they want is to lose four, five or six. Rangers fans heading home from Ibrox. How was it this afternoon against Kilmarnock? 3-1 win for Rangers. McCausland, Seema and Cantwell. Uh, Danny Armstrong penalty. Kelly getting a penalty had pulled it back to 2-1, but that only lasted two minutes. Hearts take the points against Livy. Poor old Livy, bottom of the table. You do worry about the West Lothian men. 2-1 Vargas and Shankland, who scored. He missed his first penalty. Second one was... Uh, just outfield play, it wasn't a penalty. Motherwell 2-2. Two, two. In some ways, I'll talk to you shortly, Andy, we're going to take a break because that is half-time there. You have 2-2 two, two for Motherwell at Hebs and Aberdeen winning at Ross County. Half-time, 2-0 Celtic. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Global Eco Energy are your renewable energy specialists. Working with Eco4 and Home Energy Scotland to offer grants and funding, we specialise in heat pump, solar and battery installations, as well as internal, external and cavity wall insulation. Prices starting from as little as £4,995 for solar PV and from £8,995 for a heat pump installation. For a free quote, free survey and to find out more about grants and funding options, call 0800 Two double three five seven double eight. Tuesday evening, January the second. Happy New Year, everyone! Thanks for making the switch to the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy, and thanks for making the switch to Glasgow's number one here for Glasgow in the West. It's Go Radio, coming from the heart of Glasgow. It's great to be in the city. You know, we're in the heart of Glasgow. Just uh, what minutes do you, you walk over sometimes from the city centre, straight out of the pub? I mean, sorry, straight out of the book. I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah, all of the above. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> straight out of the cathedral straight here which one we've got two great cathedrals there in Glasgow and we want to be the home of football for you so thank you for making the switch the half time score for Celtic it's uh, St Mirren nil, Celtic 2 Rangers winning 3-1 this afternoon so the gap narrows again after that win this afternoon Aberdeen 3-0 against Ross County Hearts 2-1 at Livy and Motherwell and Hibbs 2-2. Two, two. Andy, your old team, Motherwell, I mean, just looking at the scoreline, you'd think that's not bad, a point yeah. to Easter Road. Yeah, but when you see how late the goal was, the fact that Motherwell went a goal down, got themselves 2-1 in front, I mean, these points are so crucial. I mean, it was so important for Motherwell to get that win over Livingston at home the weekend, first time they'd won um, at home since uh, since August. But they've got another point. That's two games. They've got four points. They're steadily... You know, being a, a a bit more secure, but had they got three points today, that would have been absolutely magnificent. Aberdeen, big win for them this afternoon, Mark, and he needed. Yeah, I was listening. You know, a lot of mm. in Aberdeen, they were saying uh, Barry Robson is he the man for the job? Yeah, a number of Aberdeen supporters, Paul, on on, on the back. You could hear it at full time at Petardry and Saturday. St. Man winning there, I think had Barry lost today, then uh, Dave Cormack might have pulled the trigger. But he's turned it around. He's got a really good uh, win, and now you know Barry needs to go and try and get the boat to back him and whatever he needs, he, he, what he thinks he needs to, to bring in and also as well to hang on to Miofsky. But 
they might need to sell Miolski to fund if he thinks there's a proper rebuild uh, required Paul um, who knows and I see uh, your old pal at Dundee on Beck recalled by oh, Liverpool yeah. and they've lost him uh, which is a oh, big big yeah. blow for him good left backs hard to come by and he was a terrific uh, left back both defensively and in an attacking sense so with obviously with Andy Robertson being out injured um, at the moment you can see why Liverpool have brought Beck back but Tony Dockett will do well to replace him he sure will in the championship um, Paddy Thistle winning the other derby Andy one of your old teams the Jags against Queen's Park now Queen's Park being a t- poor run yeah. but they, they ran them close today but 3-2 win for the Jags yeah a couple of late goals there for, for both sides but I'm just slightly surprised that Queen's Park haven't made a change of manager I mean that's been some time now uh, that they've been managerless and um you know, the bottom of the table, and I know they were ahead of schedule, getting themselves promoted uh, under uh, own coil, but just a wee bit surprised that uh, they haven't made a, a, an announcement. The second part of the season uh, is going to be so crucial for them. The last thing they want to do is fall away from the championship. If they can get it right in the championship, they're the type of team that could challenge the likes of, you know, Dunfermline and Thistle and uh, Morton, Ayr, Airdrie. Uh, obviously, you'll have someone dropping from the, the the Premiership, but Queens Park, if they can get it right, I think they, they've uh, they've got the type of setup there that could challenge for one of the playoff spaces. Big, uh, places. Yep, big win for Dundee United, three 0 at Arbroath this afternoon. Derby up there in the Fife Derby. Dunfermline one, Wraith Rovers two, and Dunfermline had been motoring earlier on, but they lost two one. Morton, big win for them, three yeah. 0 against Air United and Airdrie, two 0 against Inverness Cali Thistle. Yeah, good win for yep. Airdrie as well. They hadn't won yep. in uh, four or five games. Um, still keeps it tight at the bottom Queen's Park just need to be careful Paul that they, they don't get uh, detached but uh, I agree with Andy in terms of managerial situation but there's certainly no shortage uh, of interest in, in that job You know, there's dozens and dozens uh, that want it because they know the infrastructure there the backing uh, that say that it's a, it's a really good club to go and get a hold of Sure is just seeing the highlights of the first half Andy we see the Matt O'Reilly goal there really well fashioned and of course the assist came from Paolo Bernardo well, Paolo Bernardo has shown what he was capable of in the game against Rangers. Not just his goal, his overall performance was really good. I think the perception of him now is that he's the type of player who can who can make a difference and do something for Celtic. Always, it's uh, what can Callum McGregor offer Celtic? What can Matt O'Reilly offer Celtic? I think what you're seeing is someone in Bernardo who can also offer something for Celtic. That was a really sharp, sharp turn inside the box that set up the chance for uh, for O'Reilly he's also as well 6 foot 2 6 foot 3 Bernardo he's got a bit of presence he's also got a lovely touch he's good on the ball but he brings that bit of, that bit of height um, to the team and if you look at the first goal again Paul just seen the replay just appreciating a wee bit more the initial play from Callum McGregor he's a challenge coming in holds off the challenge rolls in O'Reilly O'Reilly rolls in Maeda and it's a really clever first touch from Maeda because he takes it across Tanza so Tanzer either has to wipe him out and it's a penalty and a possible red card or he's getting a one-on-one with the goalie. Tanzer lets him go and he gets a lovely finish from 10, 11 yards out. 2-0 Celtic and then right at the end uh, a rare attack by St Mirren but it was uh, it didn't work out well for them because with a challenge from Olesanya we think he was going you know he was going for the ball but uh, he collided yeah. his boot straight into the face of uh, Joe Hart and yeah. he's off. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of VAR, but I, I think maybe VAR has got this one right. I don't think anyone can complain. He, he was given a a yellow card by David Munro, the referee, which deems it to be reckless. But I think it was dangerous. I think it was serious foul play, and he he had to go. He had to go for Rangers a win this afternoon. I guess for the big two, the Celtic game's not over yet, but the two up, it's half time. Mark, it's. The, the managers before the game we were saying on Saturday, you know, a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2, two, two, they both may have taken it. Now, we'll never know. It's Brendan Rodgers has taken the points. I think for the Rangers manager, for Clément, it'll be interesting now how he regroups in January. They've already brought in Silva and there's more to come. Yeah, funny, Paul, I, I agree. I think both managers might have taken a draw uh, privately yeah. mm-hmm. uh, before it. But uh, as you say, Celtic have won uh, the game and they've put themselves back in the in the box seat in many ways but this is a massive month um, Paul you know I think under Ange Postacoglu Celtic got the title because of the work that they've done in January um, so you always see oh, it's a difficult month and I, but yeah. just go and get your work done you know go and do your job and for Rangers they've already started they've got they've got Silva in who should enhance the forward line there's no doubt um, about that but it's what else Philippe Clement decides to do because as I've said Paul 
he needs to be ruthless. He won't be able to do everything he wants to do in the next four weeks, but he needs to get a, a start on it. And um, because if he doesn't, you don't find a way to beat Celtic. Ultimately, it costs you your job. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. As we start our tour, waiting for the teams to come back out at New Love Street or the Smizer Stadium. I don't think we miss the old uh, Love Street, but there were some great games there over the years. Remember uh, St Mirren being in the, the European Cup, the second yeah. tournament. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Rutulic played at, at Love Street, yeah, didn't he, for final yeah. um, against uh, St Mirren. Uh, back in the day, obviously Sir, yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson's time, Stevie Archibald yeah. and Victor Munoz playing for um, St Mirren as well. When you, when you, when Doogie you think Sumner. back, Doogie Sumner. Jimmy Bone. Oh, there's a few. There's a <laughs> few belters in there. Yeah. We've got loads of football on today. Why <laughs> I went down the line of uh, the old Love Street, who knows? Happy New Year and where you at? The match, Reagan. Good evening, Reagan. Happy New Year. Oh, Paul, it's good to be on. And uh, I hope 2024 is good to come to all you guys. Thanks very much, yeah, Reagan. Reagan. Same to you. Cheers, Reagan. I've got a wish list here, but the programme's only on for another hour, so we don't have time. <laughs> Listen, Reagan, you got it started well for you, didn't it? The old year ended well for you as a Celtic fan at the match. How was it? What, yeah, was, the atmos- Paul. what was the atmosphere like? How were you looked after? Oh, the atmosphere was great, Paul. And I was glad I was sitting up nice and uh, up uh, uh, very high mm-hmm. so that I didn't get soaked with rain. But it was a, yeah. it was a, it was a great game of football. Yeah. They've been nervy in the last 10 or 12 minutes because I thought it was a great free kick by Tavernier and then Rangers got right back into the game. But no, I thought Celtic played well. Uh, I listened to you guys in the first time there. I thought uh, Paolo Bernardo was brilliant in the game. Yeah. Uh, he, he probably should have scored in the first two the first. Uh, mm-hmm. Two minutes of the game, we, we he had a great shot, and then he had a, he had a great mm-hmm. uh, header from our corner as well. So, mm-hmm. no, I thought um, Paolo Bernardo was good, but I thought Callum McGregor was absolutely brilliant. I know um, Mark was saying there that Brendan Rodgers would have took him to Leicester, but he's, he's just, I don't know, I don't know what it is, Paul, but he just seems to turn up in these big matches. Yeah. Andy, what would you say? It's his level of consistency that is uh, that is so impressive, and you know you wondered what would happen with a Celtic captain after Scott Brown had left. You know, dominating Scottish football for for so long, being such a strong, forceful leader. But Callum McGregor, I think, has just been sensational in in that role. We we talk about his ability, but I think just the way he conducts himself on and off the park. It's a real uh, tribute to him, and obviously he's got a he's got a huge fan in Brendan Rodgers, who seems to just build everything around him. If Celtic are bringing in players in the middle of the park, you want to know how he'll uh, you know have an understanding with Callum McGregor because he's just so important to the team. Andy, in these days, what Mark told us earlier on, reminding us that Brendan Rodgers wanted him at Leicester five years ago. And whatever he's paid at Celtic, which will be a lot of money, but it could have been, I don't know, two or three times more. You don't often get somebody making a commitment to a football club for such a long period of time when you've got so much talent. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the lure of uh, playing in the Premier League in England is is, is, uh, such a, a big one for so many players. But this is a guy who's come through the ranks and remember, he was he was someone who had to go to Notts County just to get a game time, just to learn a wee bit more about the game. He obviously hooked up with, with Jack Grealish there, but since coming back, um, he's just taken on every single challenge. He meets it head on. And now you think, if Callum McGregor is out of the team, that, that's a huge blow for Celtic. And Mark, what an example he is to young boys and girls coming yeah. through in the game. You you might not be the overnight hit. I. Oh, he works hard, Paul, and, he's had, and that's what he's had to do. Um, you know, and you think of the different managers that, he, that he's had to work under uh, and impress. Um, you know, so I think you know, going way back um, when uh, Ronnie Dial and John Collins had him. I think you know, John, an old teammate, Andy's John put a lot of work in with Callum McGregor um, as well. Yep, you know, could see he was a really uh, cultured uh, midfielder. He then took over from from uh, from Scott Brown and what was a difficult time for the football club, Paul. They just lost the league by 25 points. A new manager coming in, a lot of negativity about the place. And Callum McGregor brought a brought a canvas. I think, you know, a guy that we've been talking about a lot here in the last 10, 10 minutes, Joe Hart was a big help to him. 
you know, arrived at the club has experience. Yeah. I think Joe Hart was yeah, you know, a good one for him to, to go to and just bounce things uh, off and that kind of leadership group. But a totally different captain in terms of what we see in the public eye from Scott Brown. And Scott, Scott Brown was a terrific player. I, I would get involved and would get involved in the wind up and try. Cal McGregor's not, not like that. So it's a different type of leadership but both very, very effective. Yeah. yeah, I saw with Cantwell the other day. You know, there could have been a moment, and I think he just could smiled. Have been, but he he helped other. to defuse yeah. it, actually, but it yeah. could yeah. have been. Yeah, but listen, yeah. I think at that point he knows he's, 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 he's got the better of, of, uh, yeah. of Cantwell. But I go back to the point, I'm not sure why Clermont was putting Cantwell sure. uh, on. I don't think that was the right call. Regan, what's your wish, wish for the new year, football-wise? Um, Scotland to win the European Championship, Paul. <laughs> Good man, yeah. Absolutely, to win. Not just to win a game, to win the whole tournament. What What are you on this afternoon, Regan? <laughs> no, listen, no, but to be there is uh, will be amazing. Oh, it's going to be good, Paul. It's going to be good. You're um, going over, aren't you? I, Paul, I've applied through the UEFA website all, over the past two weeks oh. to try and get t- uh, tickets as well, so hopefully I'll, get, I'll be okay in the ballot to be able to go, but no... Yeah. I think it's just going to be amazing to be over there, Paul. What are you going to do in the next couple of weeks, Regan, when there, there's no football, no Celtic playing? We take a bit of a break now. Um, I don't know. Probably just watch the, uh, the English football that's on. Yep. Andy, but, um, no, I just want to ask you yep. guys about the... Do, do, do you think there's a psychological edge now that Celtic have, have went over? Because I thought this was a... I mean, I spoke to you guys last week and I said, if if Rangers get the victory, they're right in this title race. But I think now that Celtic really stood in authority and got got that eight-point lead, and I think as well, the January transfer window, I think it pops up at a very, very good time as well, that Brendan Rodgers can go away. Like you guys are saying, hopefully they can get away from the Glasgow weather, they can get a training camp and they can bring in some players and, and hopefully start from scratch and hope to win that title again Mm -hmm. yeah December was looking poor for Celtic then it changed in the last 10 days or so Mm -hmm. Mark two questions in there the psychological battle I mean Rangers were in the title race Mm -hmm. they still are big time yeah yeah. what about the psychology of this I think I think well you could see with the way Celtic started today Paul you know it it was night and day I mean I think in the eyes of many they maybe went to the game um, on on Saturday, slight underdogs, mm-hmm. even though they were, you know, maybe Rangers had a wee bit more confidence um, about them. But Celtic controlled the, the game, and, and and as we said, led by Callum McGregor, he was the difference. And then the rest of the guys responded, obviously, all, all the, the 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 class and goals um, as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's Celtic uh, will feel that that you know to get that kind of uh, if you like that kind of champions feel about them again. You know, the the team to beat. But the window's going to be massive, Paul, mm-hmm. to see how they shape up come February uh, the 1st to see if if Brendan Rodgers gets what he wants because he's had a few moans and groans about not getting what he wanted in terms of yeah. the level of player. So you've got 31 days to go and correct that. You've got tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of pounds in the bank to go and bank the manager, uh, back the manager. And let us say, Paul, don't take any gambles in this window. Mm-hmm. There's a 40, 50 million quid title up for stake. Don't take any gambles, Andy. Yeah, I, I think when you when you look at what Celtic want to do in this window, they obviously want experience. They want the pedigree. They want the finished article. I think we've heard so often now about Brendan Rodgers not wanting any more projects. He's got enough of them. Some of them he actually doesn't want to fancy. So it'll also be interesting to see who goes out the door. You know who 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 wants to play elsewhere because. Um, Oh, I thought Celtic were going to get another goal there. It was squared by uh, Greg Taylor, was that? But, um, yeah, I think they obviously need to... I mean, Lager Bielka is on the bench. Navrovsky is playing today. You just wonder if there's a, a long-term future for them because they've been so far away from... I think Navrovsky stays, Lager Bielka will, will get sold or will, will go away and loan this window. And, and Matt Phillips is away sure. already, isn't he? Exactly. Burnaby, they'll be trying to offload him, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Would agree. The yeah. decision to make him tumble. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get caught by Ashley as well, probably. You, you, would hope, yeah. you would hope, uh, Regan, that someone like Kyogo, I know he's had a bit of a blow today not being in the international squad, but maybe he can kick on with scoring more regularly. We, we're seeing a game tonight where Matt O'Reilly's got a goal, he's also set one up for Dyson Maida. So uh, yeah. that shows you again the importance of someone in the middle of the park who can not only create goals but he's beginning to score regularly himself.
Did Alice Johnson sail a bit close to the wind at the game the other day? I'm, I'm not having a go at him, but uh, Peter Grant thought maybe he would change when the manager would take him off. Do you know, just in general, I, I mean, I'm at a game yesterday with no VAR, yeah. and there's so many controversial incidents at, at Middlesbrough Coventry, and it was played... It was played in a very physical sense and there was a high level for, for a yellow card. I, I just like the high threshold for, for yellow card. So, yeah, maybe he did sail close to the wind. He, he was on a yellow. He was involved in a, a collision. I don't think it was worth a second yellow, but I think any management team has to be so aware of, uh, you know, soft yellow cards and... Um, yeah, maybe maybe Brendan Rodgers. Maybe it did cross his mind to take him off, but maybe he thought not. We need him. We need his experience. He must know what what he's doing and just get us through to the end. And that's what happened. Mark, you wouldn't be surprised if he did change it. The manager. Uh, in terms of Alistair Saturday, yeah, yeah, he could have got a second yellow pole yeah. very very yeah. easily. He could have got a second yellow for the the free kick. I think um, with the, the the arm going across the face of Seema. Uh, that could easily. I've uh, been a second uh, yellow card for sure. So, yep, um, you know, one or two decisions um, on the field by by Nick Walls raised a, a few eyebrows. Greg Taylor's taking a knock, Andy. Is he still is he just recovering? I think he'll yeah. recover. He's off the pitch right. now. Obviously, they needed the uh, the physio to, to come on. But uh, Palmer is another one who I think can play, you know, maybe a bit better for yeah. Celtic in mm. terms of, you know, what Matt O'Reilly's yeah. doing. Mm. Creating ch- uh, goal scoring chances, maybe adding a, a few himself, but he's he's certainly cemented himself in the team. I think Brendan Rodgers likes him, but would like to see, I don't know, maybe just a higher quality of his end product. And more of a team player. Sometimes, Reagan, it looks as though at the corner kicks, he's looking for the spectacular, trying to score instead of trying to get the ball. Mm. Do you know, he, he kicked one out of the park uh, uh, the other yeah. day, a corner, and I remember Tommy McLean took me off because I, I, oh. I was on corners and I hit it behind the goal and oh. uh, he just put up my number and took me off. It was after about 20 minutes. <laughs> so I never did it again in yeah. my career. Yeah. <laughs> and surely, yeah, <laughs> you, just, you just wonder yeah. sometimes with, with, with Palmer, you get it, he's exciting, Paul, he gets you in the edge of your seat. I think sometimes, I don't know if you want to use the word selfish or use the word wants to be the, the kind of star turn and mm. scoring the spectacular one all the time rather than just being more of a more of a team player and that's something but Brendan Rodgers will, will, will get the balance mm. eh, right with him but that's what I said in the programme last week and you asked about it, he said, I think he's, he's a type of personality that could get a wee bit carried away with, with things yeah. and want mm. to do too much and be the star turn and I think that was a wee bit evident on Saturday just be, first and foremost be a team player looking for a photo op for the Insta a bit like yourselves <laughs> whatever that is Regan Regan great chance there for Celtic still a chance but oof, it's uh, way past the post it's not happening in fact it's Palma there he is he's smiling he obviously is not listening to yeah, us right. at the it was a good chance yeah. because it fell perfectly yeah. for him he's yeah. in a decent position he's inside the box there's not a there's not a terrible angle and he's just lost control of the shot yeah. Who's going to win in England then? Final point, Reagan, given that's going to be what's the next couple of weeks. My brother-in-law, big Liverpool fan, was at the game last night. Um, big win for Liverpool against Newcastle. What the second half, that Wasn't was. It? I know. God, uh, yeah, all the goals. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Who's going to win it? Probably Manchester City, Paul. I hope I support the Congo does well. He's three points off it now, Paul, and he could yeah. possibly do it. I think they would sell for a top four. They've certainly been, yeah. been great to watch. When you consider Harry Kane, no one talks about him. And Celtic have, uh, you know, the, uh, sorry, Spurs Last. have done really well with them. Harry Kane for, no. Wayne Rooney for <laughs> Queen's Park? <laughs> no. I see Wayne Rooney's out of a job. We never like yeah, to see that. Sack, it was yeah. a strange one, though, wasn't it? John Eustace had them six top when 83 yeah. days ago they made the switch, but they wanted the kind of Hollywood and, and, and that, that slogan stuck with them, uh, uh, Paul, and yeah. a bit no fear football, you know, and that's a hard thing for all. Uh, managers to live up to but yeah, yeah. sometimes when these, these new owners come in the Americans that, yep. you know, sometimes you just you know, stick to the basics is it going well? yeah mm-hmm. it's going absolutely fine well why make a change? And but again management is brutal what was it? 13, 14, 15 15, 15, 15 games, games. 13, 83 15 days, days. Yeah. 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 it's yeah. remarkable yeah. it's brutal but, absolutely but brutal you know when your nearest neighbours uh, Aston Villa are second top yeah. of the table yeah, yeah. of the table not the second yeah. division as it was then it's always going to be tough Regan look after yourself we'll speak to you in a few weeks time. Cheers, Regan. Guys. see you Regan Cheers, Regan. Thanks so much. Yeah, he makes some good points there about the psychology of it. Um, I don't think 
as a Celtic are going to make a substitution in a moment or two. Um, o is about to come on. And it's the last we'll see him before he heads away. You know, Yang, yeah. Yep, Yang, yep, I think Yang, for, yep. Yang for so, um, for uh, Palmer. Yang yeah, for indeed. Palmer, the man, right, we, were, okay. the man yeah. we were talking about. Yeah, Yang and yeah, Yang's got that wee bit of trickery about him as well. I think you can see with with, with, with St. Mumby down to ten men, you know, Celtic are trying to get the ball in wide areas and, and cuts it burn open uh, from that way with, with kind of cutbacks uh, and certainly Yang's got the go in his uh, his locker to do that. But well yeah. it's only ten minutes into the second half, Palmer's off and uh, you know Yang has now got a, a really good amount of time to, to try and make an impact. And he needs it Andy, doesn't he? Because we've not yeah. seen much from Yang. Exactly. Can you imagine he sets up a couple of goals or maybe yeah. gets one himself? That is exactly what you do when you or rather what you want from a, a substitute who's very keen just to just to impress and to make an impact. Some of the headlines today, Celtic and Brennan Rodgers saying he doesn't fear losing Matt O'Reilly this month, despite speculation linking him with Inter Milan, Internazionale. So he's, he's going nowhere. Bob. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. no chance. The 40 million title at stake. No, there's, 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 there's no, none of your major players will leave Celtic in window, this, this window, that's for sure. Someone might be a different story, yeah, but sure. not, not, not uh, any of your, your, your top six or seven players are leaving Celtic. Celtic are still two up at the moment, 56 minutes gone. And what about Rangers interested in signing Scotland and the former Hibs left-back Josh Doig, 21 years old, as we know, at Hellas Verona. Yeah. Could you see that? But, but he's a terrific player, yeah. you know, and Celtic, it looks as though Rangers have got a problem um, in the left-back uh, area. It might need to be solved in this uh, window. So yeah, you could see Josh Doig all day long. It's what it's the affordability factor. Hey, Paul, what's uh, Verona going to want for him? Can Rangers uh, get to that sum? But bigger picture, it's a lesson again. I know it was a different regime from uh, Philippe Clement and the current recruitment uh, set up. But when you're going for Josh Doig, why were they not going from eighteen months ago when he was available? You know they've missed out on Lewis Ferguson. They've missed out on a few good players that you think you know go and go and get them. There's, there's some right under your nose that are really good players and with your the setup that you have and the coaches that you have you should be able to go and kick them on as well Andy Josh Doig I like him I, I like I liked him when he broke through at Hibs I liked his attitude he's really really keen to do well I like the fact that he's taken on this added responsibility this huge challenge of going over to Italy and you know trying to make a, a name for himself which he, he has done where, whatever he goes on to do in his career now, whether he comes back to to Scotland or stays in Italy, he's, I think he's shown himself to be, um, you know, a, a, a guy that's prepared to take on a challenge and and meet it head on. He's got great ability. We mentioned earlier about the rapid Vienna winger Nicholas Kuhn, who is apparently wanted by Celtic. The speculation today and. It's January, so it's going to be some January as we yeah. watch Celtic come forward again. But Mark, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think they do need a, a, a player in the wide uh, areas. Paul, they probably do need a, another one. You could say they've got five or six. Um, but Mikey Johnson and, and James Forrest, game time's getting less um, and less. Telio, don't know an awful lot about him, but I, I'd, I'd be surprised if he could come in and, and make an impact that's going to help you win a, a title uh, in the next five months. So... Yeah, they're probably looking for something a wee bit more ready-made in the wide areas. Certainly are. Other headlines today, just looking elsewhere. A couple of Motherwell fans on saying, is this the turnaround, Andy? They've got a couple of points in the last week, which... Yeah, you know, yeah was... I, I hope so. It's been uh, a torrid time, and I know that they've played more games than most, but they are like fourth bottom now. There, there's a bit of a gap developing in terms of points. I know that it can very quickly changed but if they keep just chipping away at it their home form has to improve uh, they've got a beautiful pitch there they got a great win against Livingston and uh, you just want to uh, build on it it's been a it's been a really tough time for Stuart Kettlewell but uh, I think he's handling it well but he, he'll know himself you cannot fall into that uh, losing habit again because there's just been far too many points thrown away 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. We're going back on the line shortly as uh, Yang gets one of his first touches of the afternoon. Great ball in to the box looking for Kyogo and uh, Bernardo. But no, the ball is clear, but it's still with Celtic. They are pushing forward. We're watching it on Sky. Wave Andy. after wave yeah. of attack. And Callum McGregor at the heart of it, just playing little balls into you know, Greg Taylor. They're trying to work it wide. They always want to get to the byline and cut it back. And 
Uh, big chance here for Bernardo. Oh, what a save. I think the flag went up on the other side. I don't Lovely know. turn from Bernardo as well. What a beautiful mm. save there from Hemming. Yeah. Mm. It's great working with Andy, isn't it? <laughs> on this kind of stuff. I feel as though we're. I know. You know. It's just the same. He doesn't feel the same about us. <laughs> <laughs> the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go. 61 minutes gone, another goal there, and Celtic are now three up. Greg Taylor. Scoring yeah. just a few moments ago, Andy. An unlikely yeah. goal scorer, but he, you saw he getting himself forward. Beautiful dink ball through by Paolo Bernardo, and it was a difficult one to take, but Greg Taylor controlled it, side of the foot volley and, and past Hemming. There was too much uh, pace on the ball. He, he hits it from six yards, and with a three-goal advantage now, it's just a matter of how many for Celtic. And it, yeah, yeah, it was a lovely finish from, uh, from Greg Taylor. 80 yards out, as Andy said, a, a beautifully dinked the ball, lovely weighted pass from Paolo Bernardo and Celtic Paul. I, I think they'll, well, just what, 61, 62 minutes. It looks as though we've got another two or three goals and they're not going to let up here um, this afternoon. And by the way, you just never know, goal difference might be a factor come the end of the season. That's exactly what I was going to say to you. There's a title race on very much. Um, and goal difference could be the difference at the end, as it was in what season was that, 2003? It went to the the final yeah. goals wasn't yeah. it and 2005 Rangers. was the yeah, last as well, as well. 2008 true. yeah, yeah. We've, we've had, we've had, certainly in this millennium we've had three or four of Celtic it's set to make another couple of changes yeah like a Bielka and Abada Lil Abada and Dane that's uh, good news for Celtic obviously there's a break for a couple of weeks and Navroski I think coming off for Laga Bielka and uh, Maeda coming off for Abada yeah the intre- it's been interesting uh, all season the you know the players that were signed the money that was spent on centre halves and neither of them have been anywhere near it but uh, Abada every Celtic fan knows what he can do and uh, the fact that he scores so often in big games the fact that he's got so much more to give, he, he, he can. I think he can become even more effective. So um, I wonder whether he'll get on the the score sheet tonight. He's always someone that wants to to look lively in and around that eighteen yard box. Also, as well, I think Brendan Rodgers has, has gone out his way to build up a relationship with him, Paul, because he'd been injured and a chance to to get that connection in terms of what he could do on the park. Remember, the off the off the park problems going on with the Israelis, etc., yeah. etc. Brendan Rodgers made the point, speaking to him, taking him out for dinner, one to one, and just you know making him feel at home, if you like, and 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 let me show that certainly the Celtic management and the dressing room, everybody was one hundred percent behind him. And he did that first time round, didn't he, with Scott Brown, for example? He, he did, him did it with Callum McGregor in yep. Spain. Uh, yep. He flew him out to to Mallorca um, as 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 well. So yeah, it's important uh, to do that. I mean, it must be hell of a difficult to try and man manage and keep 24, 25 players happy. In fact, it is an impossible job. You can't do it. Um, but wait, if you've got a, you know, a nucleus of five or six really important players, keep those guys on side, Paul, then you, you'll not be too far away. Let's hear from Philip Clement now. Rangers fans heading home from the 3-1 win this afternoon against Kilmarnock. This was the manager's take on it at a full time. It was a really good performance uh, against the team that I respect a lot. Um, they won three out of the four old firms until now this season. Um, it's a difficult team to break also because they, they play really well structured, organized with a lot of uh, physicality, but in a positive way I mean that with good transition set pieces so we had to be on our toes but my, my team did that today and uh, they showed a, a lot of quality um, with three good goals really good football goals uh, good combination play and, and good other chances also, we could have scored more. So uh, a really, really positive afternoon. After, yeah, at the end of a, a very busy period, eh, because um, that was the challenge. We had uh, 11 or 12 games in 37 days. Uh, we had a lot of injured players. One moment it was 11 players out. So I had a feeling in moments that I was pulling this elastic at its maximum and it was a uh, it could break every moment but the players sticked into the story they worked really hard until their limits or over their limits in moments maybe and uh, if at the end you can give this performance it only means that uh, the team is growing a lot 
And um, so I'm happy for them that they can have a short break to recover mentally, physically, and then we can start a, a hard month in, uh, in January with a good training camp. Mark Goody? Yeah, I mean, Paul, you take a wee step back now that you can sort of, of, of reflect uh, on um, Philippe Clermont's 11 weeks in charge, 16, 17 games. If you to say to him and the range of supporters, considering the situation that he inherited, um, that without signing a player, you will win the League Cup, you'll top your Europa League section, and the title will be back in your hands, albeit they've lost to Celtic, um, and, and Celtic have, have stretched the league, but you, the title will be in your hands, because if Rangers win every game between now and the end of the season, they become champions. So, if you to offer them that scenario, I'm sure I'm sure they would have taken it. The big blow was obviously losing the game on Saturday, but that's where today, he would have had a wee concern, let's just win today, let's get into the winter break, I can go and try and bring in a couple of players, we can do a bit of wheeling and dealing, uh, and we've got a lot to to look forward to so when you assess what he uh, has managed to do uh, I think it's been pretty impressive that said Paul as a Rangers manager you must find a way to beat Celtic that's the bottom line that's what will win you the league or not win you the league and, and he'll know that and he'll know the players that he'll want to take with him and the ones that he needs to get out the door as quickly as possible Here's a little bit more from Philippe Clement. I think this team is on a, in a really good way, this dressing room also. If I see the, the atmosphere every day uh, in the building, with the trainings, their ambition in the trainings. Also, now after the, our first defeat, and we knew it would come one day, the reaction was how I wanted it. Uh, and to make a good analyse, what went wrong, what we could do better, or other people. Um, and then react directly on the pitch again and, and leave everything behind us win or lose Andy thoughts on Philip Clon's comments after the game today and reflecting on the defeat at the weekend it's the perfect way to bounce back from a defeat and um, you know he's talking about how, who can do better he's talking about his own players but he's, he's also talking about other people that it's pretty clear Rangers aren't going to let this uh, you know, the, this thing with the SFA, they're not going to let it lie. They, they they do want some action taken. They want a bit more clarity. As Mark was saying earlier on, no one, I don't think, has got any problem with uh, transparency, but it would have to be for the whole league, for, for, every, for every club. And my goodness, we have had some horrific uh, refereeing decisions, VAR decisions. Uh, it's... Uh, I, I was all in favour of R and I, I just think it's a terrible problem now we're not using it. Well. Would you ditch it, Andy? Yes, here, would, yeah, you would absolutely. Ditch it, yeah. I know that they won't, but uh, I go to games regularly with Nova and, um, you know, there's there's contentious decisions. I, I was at a game yesterday where you had Michael Carrick and Mark Robbins, Coventry beat Middlesbrough 3-1, a lot of things to talk about. And um, any problems with, with the referee? I asked both managers, no. No. Wow. No, she's gone, mate. Mark, what do you think from Rangers' point of view? Is this, uh, and they justifiably feel aggrieved about it at the weekend, but yeah. it wouldn't have been a goal anyway. So is it a distraction to take away from the fact it was the first defeat under Philippe Clement against Celtic? Or are they right to pursue this with the SFA well, with such vigour? If, if, if they feel internally, Paul, that's what they want to do, then yeah, they've, they've, they've every right to do what they think is best uh, for their football club. And Philippe Clermont should step away from that process now because it will be in the hand of the board yeah, and sure. the administrators um, in the building. What he needs to get right is get it right on the park. And as I've said, Paul, there's been a succession of Rangers managers that haven't been able to get the better. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, Michael Beale, they've lost their jaws because they can't win the league. There's still a number of players there. So Philippe Clermont's biggest concern will be getting players onto the pitch that are good enough to win a title between now and the end of May it shouldn't be really concerned about who the, the match referee is going to be because if your players are good enough that should take care of itself so yes as a football club go and pursue it uh, if you're looking for transparency I've no problem with it at all um, but every manager every board member every player and every supporter at the 11 other football clubs in the SPFL Premiership I've had a problem with VAR and match referees this season so do you release the audio of every game if they want it so I think with something like that I would say you'd need to set the rules out at the start of a campaign so that everybody knows where they stand. Andy, what's happening at St Mirren Celtic? 
Yeah, a couple of changes. Maybe a bit of a surprise you would have expected Kyogo if he'd stayed on to maybe get a goal. But with 20 minutes to go, he's gone off alongside Paolo Bernardo and uh, Brendan Rodgers has brought on Hatate and uh, O oh, as a, another striker. And great, a bit like Abada, great mm. to see Hatate back fit. Over two months he's been missing, Andy. And they it? have missed yeah. him. Yeah. I think you're mm. right, Paul. They've, they've missed his influence in the middle of the park. They've missed his control. They've missed his passing ability, his range of passing. Uh, they've missed the understanding that he had built up with O'Reilly and McGregor. And uh, if Hatati is back fully fit, then he's he's the type of player that can make Celtic better in the second half of the season. He's had his first touch, Andy. Because when you're away for two to three months, what are you looking out for when a player comes back? Well, uh, you want to get on the ball you want to get control of it you want to play some passes that's his game you maybe want to have an attempt at goal you want to be in positions where you're helping a teammate I mean you see a badder here where Celtic have lost the ball he's a guy that has sprinted back maybe about 40-50 yards just to win possession that's the type of teammate you want as Celtic come forward the three up at the moment the first goal coming in less than a minute right at the start of the game Maida the scoring then five minutes later it was Matt O'Reilly and in the 60th minute Greg Taylor I see did Greg Taylor he didn't cup his ears did he but he put his fingers put his to, fingers near to celebrate in front of the Celtic yeah. fans yeah, I'm not quite sure he'd need to explain that, sure. that the yeah. celebration but just for him Paul like Greg Taylor and, and yeah there were some Celtic supporters mm-hmm. might think oh, we, we could do better at left back I understand that chain of thought, but at two million quid, Paul well, he's given fantastic service. He's been superb for Celtic. He was great against Rangers, really good, competed really well. And uh, like Mark, I think he's been a great signing for Celtic, played really well. Back to Rangers, a 3 1 win this afternoon against Kilmarnock. Philippe Clement speaking afterwards about a number of issues. And I think here he was asked about January, transfer window. How active? I think uh, very active every day by looking at a lot of players together with the people in the club. And, and then we will see uh, how much things you, you, can make, uh, yeah, you can make happen. The things we want, not, uh, we're not going to sign 10 players, don't worry. No, sure. We're, nobody would have thought it was uh, 10. They've got one in already. He came on today. Yeah, he probably looked, Maybe Paul, yeah. ideally, you know, if, you, if you can get another two or three, depends mm-hmm. on the budget, depends. But like you said, he's, he's got a staff in there. Be working hard. I think for himself as well, Paul. He has, you know, how many staff have had a real hectic schedule, yeah. and they'll just, just even if it's just three or four days, you know, just yeah. go and catch your breath, just recharge your batteries so that you're ready to go uh, again. Let's get involved in the transfer window. You know, the, the the training camp. I think he said too, going to uh, La Mangue will give him an opportunity to sit down and, and have a have a coffee with a few players one to one and have a, a right good chat with them. Um, that'll be guys that he'll want to keep. Um, at the club more than guys that he, he's not that bothered um, about keeping and then go and see if he can enhance his squad where it puts him into a position come February the 1st Paul that he thinks they can actually go and win the title because that has got to be mm-hmm. the aim of the next four weeks Andy Walker likes a coffee in Spain I've enjoyed a couple <laughs> with him over the years <laughs> Café con leche Café sombra a sombra that's what, as you call a it sombra. as a former player would you rather go away just now I'm obviously thinking about Celtic who are not well, Rangers are going into the sunshine I, I remember yeah. it helped us and I only won one title and that uh, that winter we went to Spain for, for four days um, it was a couple of days of uh, doing nothing really and uh, just playing a bit of golf enjoying the sun and then a couple of days of of training towards the end just to get your sharpness back and I think it's great great to get away great to get uh, away from the just the, the everyday uh, structure of life in Glasgow you know training at the, the same place meeting the same players and just going away and having a laugh with uh, teammates some of whom were, were relatively new I think it, it works all the time Headlines today Rangers winning 3-1 against Kilmarnock Celtic Currently with 15 minutes to go, three up against St Mirren. St Mirren down to 10 men. Olasanya sent off just on half time for a high boot, which did go into the face of Joe Hart, but Joe Hart got on with it. It was a sore one. VAR deemed, and I think probably rightly, nobody would complain. Yeah, I felt I, for I, the player, uh, yeah, but I don't sure. think he's going to do yeah. Joe Hart, but he certainly caught him high because I mean, it was a potential jawbreaker. But like I say, I, I felt from, but. Yep. I, I, pro, I, I do understand why it was a red card but I do feel for the player Chance for Hatate there Andy Walker? 
Yeah, he's what, 25 yards uh, outside the box. I mean, we know he's got a, a very powerful shot. I always think of that goal that he scored at Tynecastle when he was driving forward with the ball and he, he hit an absolute screamer. And it was, I think it was past Craig Gordon. Uh, so that's that, that's the type of quality that he has. But he, he he's having another pop at goal again. So there's someone... I think it's always... You, you need a goal-scoring threat from the middle of the park if you want to be successful. Celtic have got that with O'Reilly. But if they had a bit more of it and they spread it around and, you know, Celtic in recent seasons have spread the goal so well amongst their strikers, their wide players, their midfield players, a few defenders chipping in with the odd goal, it's it's really important. Aberdeen winning 3-0 at Ross County, two goals from Jamie McGrath and uh, Majewski. I called him Magic, you're calling him Bojan, it's his real Jan name. Miofsky, yeah. they, they call him Magic to try and get another two million in the, <laughs> the transfer. Well, he's been yeah. Magic at times this season. There's a oh, oh, great double, double save. Double Beautiful. save from Hemming, Oof. that is absolutely terrific. Two yeah. efforts at the Top draw. at the front post. Johnson with the cross, O with the header, mm. the reaction save, and then Yang trying to follow up, and Oof. it's another, Oof. Oof. another great save. He was Oof. very brave there, wasn't he? Well done, Hemming. Oh, he's, that's, yeah, yeah, it was, and no wonder he just taking the a wee breath there. It just, yeah. yeah, just got him in the area that he don't want it to get you. But um, no, it was really, really good goalkeeping, very, very brave. And uh, Celtic three goals up. Uh, but I think just they're looking at that stage with Superman eight men behind the ball that they're just trying to pass it as Alex Grieve uh, comes on, good striker um, for Superman. He's come off the bench many times in the past eighteen months and got some important. Uh, goals whatever we sell to as, as, as Rio Hitatis we try to have a dig from outside the box mm. ball something or just try to walk it in corner kick for Celtic it's on Sky a great chance but uh, Andy goes that past the post was that Lager that, Bielka with yeah. it? well it was Scales, Scales yeah. the post. Uh, right at the front post he, he's gone past that front post mm. area the header's a good one he's directed it well but comes off the post and goes by and as, as Mark was saying earlier when you look at the contribution that he's made. I mean, just to be given the opportunity. Uh, that's all you want as a young Celtic player. He's been given it and my goodness, he's taken it. If everyone is fit, it is scales in one other. So at the end of January, after the window, you would expect him still to be a first choice? Oh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, Scales and so. Carter Vickers, yeah. if he's fit. And then you've got uh, Navrosky mm -hmm. and uh, Welsh yeah. as, as your backup. And then that's why I think like, like your Kubayashis and your Lagerbielkas they'll be away in the window. Shall we take a quick break and we're back. It's Celtic are three up at the moment. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go. Go Radio Football Show on the eve of the winter break. Won't happen next year though, Mark, will it? Because of the enlarged Champions League. It's not going to happen. Yeah, the, the winter, winter break. So this is yeah. uh, the last one that we've, uh, that we've got. Yeah. Uh, like the, 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 I think they can... They came in, Paul. When was it? I can remember going away. Uh, Dick Advocat and Joe Vengloss, his yeah. first year was at the, the January 1999 when the winter break first came in, and they've been in, in place more often than not. They did away with him for, for a few seasons, but like like Andy, I think I'd imagine nine players out of ten uh, would would uh, would favour it. Just that chance of a wee, wee bit of better weather, um, get to know your teammates better, just a bit of camaraderie, work hard, have a couple of beers, and get yourself uh, set uh, for. We're coming back for the second half. Andy, what's the latest from St Mirren Celtic? Wave after wave of attack. Celtic are in behind again. It's a badder with a cross. It's going to come back to him. He's had a shot and yet again it's another save from Hemming. Celtic 3-0 up, 10 minutes to go. I think there's maybe at least one more goal in this. Maybe two. Here's a bit more from Philippe Clement speaking. I think he was asked about how he was feeling after, what, 17 games as we come at the end of the old year and into the new one about me it's about the team so no I'm happy that everybody's saying they see a different team now uh, with more winning mentality because that's what I demand every day um, I see also more and more that uh, more and more quality that the team starts to understand better and better how I want to see football how I want them to run together how I want them to create spaces for, uh, for other players it becomes more and more fluid. But I, that are things I know if the players keep on working and they, they stay attentive and they stay concentrated, that after a while it becomes more natural for them. Um, so there are really positive things and it's now 
not being satisfied but being ambitious to become better. 3 1 today, and they brought on the £35 million player who's on loan from Wolves, uh, Silva. He was speaking about him. Yeah, first, I think it's, it's always great to, if a player does the good things in the training, and they did yesterday, um, to give him minutes at Ibrox because it's a magical place to play the first time. And he had to feel it also. Then you go also with that feeling into this break. It's different than when you, you were on the bench all the time. Um, he understands the story. We had a lot, a lot of talks before he came about football, about how I see players playing. We spoke about several positions, not only one, that he can play in several positions and how I see that. So at the end, he could go to places where he could earn much more money, but he came for the football story and for the tradition of the club also and to win trophies because he's somebody who's really ambitious. So it was good for him to, to get his first impression about things. And in these 20 minutes, you didn't have a feeling it was a player who didn't know his teammates. So that's already a very positive thing because it's not easy as a attacking player to come into a new team that you don't know the other guys and how to run and how to play and who gives the decisive balls and who likes the dribble and all these things you need to learn and you need to get connection with them. So you see already now that he's a player who, who will suit uh, the way we want to play football. Mark, you were speaking about Silva the other day. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good signing. Um, but I remember him, I mean, like he kind of came off the bench um, a lot uh, for Wales when he was he was down the road and I thought he was always one of those guys who was a wee bit unlucky never get the breaks of the, the, the ball but certainly um, I've no doubt he will enhance that Rangers front line uh, there is no doubt um, about that interesting about Philippe Clement's um, uh, quotes here as well that Silva could have gone for a lot more money but he's coming here for the football story and because he wants to win things as well so that shows you the mindset there between now uh, and the end of May it's been a bit nomadic for him the past year or so so somewhere just to come and try and uh, settle but the main thing is does he improve what Rangers have got up top for me he does all day long I don't understand the money thing he's got a contract he earns a wage every month that's what you'll get yeah. whatever yeah. the break up is Rangers aren't paying 100% of it but yeah. whatever Rangers are paying Wolves will make up the rest so more money Good when point. you're on loan do yeah. you get more money when you're on loan unless you so. accept less money to go somewhere else but no. you're not going to do that are you? Nobody's no, no chance Andy, what's happening at uh, the Smizer, New Love Street? I, I've got to admire the way St Mirren have, yeah. have just defended. They've kept Celtic down just to the one goal in this half were, what, five minutes before the end. Um, and I mean, the, the sending off has absolutely killed them, but I think more importantly, the first two goals in the six minutes has is, is just put them on the back foot. They were shell-shocked. I mean, the start from Celtic was extraordinary and it was never... A contest after that. It's just a question now of how many. Can they get a few more openings, Celtic? They've certainly got enough attacking players on the pitch and a goal-scoring threat from the middle of the park. You've already seen one of the defenders, Greg Taylor, getting a goal. It's um, it's, it's not a contest. And Mark, some people will be on Hatati watch. He wasn't on at the start for Celtic, at the beginning of the season, then came in came and you saw the real class of one of the top players in the country. He's been out for two and a half months, yeah. but he's back this afternoon. Aye, I mean, I, I think clearly, but, but again, with Brendan Rodgers' uh, quotes on uh, Hitati, the, the, the midfielder had to win the manager over for whatever reason. Um, and uh, clearly uh, he did, and he reproduced the form that he thought, I don't know, I can't remember if he was player of the year last year, but certainly he's, he's been brilliant uh, for Celtic since he signed when Pastor Coglu brought him in. I think he really brings an extra bit of uh, dynamism to the the Celtic midfield. Paul, his energy and the way he just runs at the at the opposition um, line. He always puts a shift in and can get back and help out defensively as well. But I think he's uh, I think he's Celtic's most dynamic um, player. Not the best player, but the most dynamic player. Looking in the championship. On Friday night, there's a big game, Mark. Queen's Park against Dunfermline. And Queen's Park would dearly love to get they need to start win. winning, Paul. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Need, they need to start winning. You don't want to get to the to the end of January and uh, be detached. You want to you know, keep yourself in the hunt. They'll obviously be looking for the likes of uh, Abroad to stay down close to them and, and, and Inverness and you know other clubs. But in order to do that, 
you need to start winning games and um, they've got to, you know, got to fancy themselves um, to, to do that on Friday night. On Saturday, Dundee United at home to Morton. Partick Thistle against Arbroath and the Wraith Rovers at the top. They're playing Airdrie. Good game there. Air against Inverness, Cali, Thistle. So the top league finishes after, well, in the next five, six minutes or so. And there will not be too much time added on, will there? On St Mirren against Celtic? No, I don't no. think so. There's been no stoppages for any uh, lengthy treatment. Just that one little incident with, with Greg Taylor. I'd imagine there'll be what, two or three minutes. And for Celtic, how big was that, Andy, then, to get the win this afternoon? Because, uh, you know, the good of Saturday afternoon from a Celtic point of view would have been, you know, diminished big time if they hadn't gone to Love Street uh, and get three points. Well, what a way to start a game. I mean, the yeah. attitude was spot on immediately. The the creative part of Celtic's football, when you saw the, the, the pass from O'Reilly that got uh, Dyson Maida in behind, and he's made it count, you know, it's less than a minute gone, but he's taken his chance, and then just five minutes later they get a second, and again it was lovely play from the ball into the box, and Bernardo had a really wonderful turn, sharp turn, setting up O'Reilly, and yet again getting a goal, and uh, I thought they might have got more goals in the second half as the, another chance... This time, Alistair Johnson cutting inside, having a go with his left peg. I don't know whether it was deflected or yet mm. another save from, from Hemming, but look at the amount of bodies inside the box. It's astonishing. Wow. Mark, we're just looking for the replay here on Sky. Yeah, cutting. So I don't think they expected him in defence, expected him to do that. Yeah. Cut on his, his, uh, his left uh, peg, but he's disappointed he didn't score. I can I understand he's on why. Made, it? Yeah. Oh. Did they get the corner for it I or not? I think it oh. I oh. can't oh. believe it. He should have stayed in his right peg. So Celtic will be asking for a bar review. <laughs> <laughs> Celtic stay uh, clear at the top of the table. Rangers, of course, then two games in hand, and they come back, of course, with cup games. Uh, we'll talk. We're just still watching what's happening here as Celtic come forward looking for goal number four. And uh, no, Mark is uh, resolutely staying out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I say, it's it's been intricate. They've just you know passed it and pulled St. Murphy side to side, you know, from right to to, to left. Um, but I think you know. Look, ultimately, just get the three points. Go into the winter break uh, on a high, which finishes off a you know a really good weekend uh, for Celtic. But a wee bit of disappointment. Not scored a couple more. And for Rangers, we heard from Philippe Plamon afterwards. So uh, that was a good win for Rangers this afternoon, which yeah. is exactly Against how a good they command up to yeah. Paul. Yeah, you know, Derek McInnes, good manager, as, as, as Philippe Clement pointed out, and he's post-match presser. Command that have played Celtic twice and Rangers once this season and won the three games. Um, so it was a a big ask, you know, Kilmarnock, as I say, all the solid at the back, get really good pace um, at the back, and then guys like Danny Armstrong and, and, and Watkins and Matty Kennedy, they've got boys that can that can go do something up the top end of the, the pitch. So a good win for Rangers, good mentality, considering they'd have been feeling low having lost the, the game on Saturday to Celtic. And Cantwell got a goal, won't do him any harm, Mark, will it? Because, you know, under Michael yeah. Beale, he was loving life. Yeah, but yeah. he's got to show more, Paul. Yeah. He, I mean, he has got to show more it's not everybody can go and have a 9 out of 10 performance mm -hmm. uh, against Celtic in, a, an old, in an old firm game but you've got to do better th than what he did um, on Saturday and that's not the first time he's not played well against Celtic it's been too many times so yeah he has got ability but you need to show it in the games that matter when your team's looking for you to go and be the difference and so far he's been at the club a year now He's not produced it often enough in the big games. Ross McCausland, the one that loads of people are talking about, Andy, he did well, played well against Celtic. And... Always like to see that, somebody young coming through, young Northern Irishman, but he's been given an opportunity at Rangers and he's taken it. He's, I thought he showed up well against Celtic, yeah. looked dangerous, yeah. could maybe have, have had a goal himself in that uh, first half when he had a chance. And he's got a goal again today, so... Someone who clearly gets himself into goal-scoring positions, which is what you want. He makes things happen, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, it, it reminds he's me of Chris Burke. When Chris Burke oh, first yeah. broke into the Rangers team, mm -hmm. you know, twenty years ago. It reminds me of Chris Burke, that kind of innocence about him, mm -hmm. and just you know, give me the ball, and he'll go and try and dribble and make things happen. He's, he's clued in tactically as well. He clearly takes on um, an instruction, but he's been a real. Uh, for uh, Philippe Clement, I think he's been a real bright spot 
um, for him as well and his steam onto the club Abdallah Seema a stunning volley this afternoon before he heads away and that's a blow isn't it I mean Rangers knew he was going but he's been one of the big successes of a summer window which wasn't brilliant yeah but so many players come in in the summer and we wondered what they would bring to Rangers and we were still wondering a good number of weeks into the season but he's come on to a game in, uh, in recent weeks in recent months and uh, he's someone again who has to do it on a regular basis. I don't think he's the type of player that Rangers can expect to sign on a permanent basis, given his uh, previous transfer fee at uh, Brighton. But he's uh, he's looking really sharp at the moment. Two and a half minutes gone, Mark, in this game uh, of injury time. 30 mm. seconds left. Celtic looking for goal number four. Um, I heard you saying that. Credit to St Mirren, the way they've defended. Yeah, men. you've got you've got to feel, you know, for the players in the, in the second half. It's a no contest when you're down to ten men. You're two goals down um, at half time. Had it not been for Hemming and the St Mirren goal, it would have been six. Um, Paul, he's put off three really, really uh, good saves. But a great afternoon's work uh, for Celtic, and they can go into the winter break top of the league, feeling really good about themselves. Andy, final thoughts on the game as it still plays the last 10, 20 seconds? Very impressed with Celtic. Yeah, it could have been more. That is just a very slight criticism because Celtic have won by three goals in a difficult uh, venue. St Mirren had a three-goal win themselves at Petodre at the weekend. But final whistle is gone and I think Brendan Rodgers will be really happy, especially with the way they started the game. St Mirren nil, Celtic 3, Dyson Maida, the camera's on him, scoring in 54 seconds. That set the pace and the tone for the evening. Matt O'Reilly making it 2-0 in six minutes. Then right on half-time, a key moment, although it had been all Celtic, but Olesanya was up front, he went for the ball, but uh, he collided with the cheek of the goalkeeper Joe Hart. So it went to VAR, he got a yellow card from the referee, but when they looked at it on VAR, it was red, he was off, and second half it was 10 man St Mirren against Celtic. Greg Taylor scoring in 60 minutes, but it could have been many more. Mark Guidi. Could have been, but a good afternoon's work uh, for Celtic, Paul, and you've got to give Celtic credit for the way they started the game. Not in 10 minutes, they blitzed St Mirren away, didn't give them a look in, and uh, Hemming has uh, kept the score down. And for, uh, for Brendan Rodgers, Paul, Considering where Celtic were three or four weeks ago, you know, some of the, the commentary uh, around yeah. Celtic, the reaction of some of the supporters, then uh, you know Brendan Rodgers finds himself back where he feels that Celtic should be, but he now needs help from the people that have got to go and do their jobs during the January window, and that means getting at least two, if not three, first team ready players in. So the challenge is now on the people behind the scenes. And he spoke, I think the fans liked it, he spoke afterwards at an event, I think just after the game, and saying is it five Rangers managers he's mm. been up against mm -hmm. at his time at Celtic. And yeah. they were all coming. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's obviously something that the supporters uh, wanted to hear. They love to hear that air of superiority yeah. and being top dogs and, and lording it over your, your rivals. But... Um, Still a lot to play for in the in the second half, and I don't think Celtic will be complacent at all. Uh, I, I imagine they'll get at least two, maybe three in in January, and I just don't think they'll be as as, as wasteful, as inconsistent as they've been this season. The drop points at Motherwell, St Johnston, Hibs, Hearts, Kilmarnock. I can't see it. You've got Hatate back fit, a badder coming back fit. I think Celtic are going to be stronger. More of a Man City in that they've had their um, upsets early on because it is unlike Celtic the challenge is on from Rangers and that was a huge game at the weekend wasn't it Massive point. Rangers were the coming team no yeah, quite. yeah still as be, I said but, yeah, yeah. But, I mean I, I, I thought it was going to be a draw on Saturday but if he forced me to pick a winner Paul I, I may well have uh, plumped for Rangers pre-match um, on Saturday so credit to Celtic uh, I thought they played really well and Callum McGregor played the captain's role led by example dictated the play and those round about him responded to it, rose to his level. Wonderful goal from Paolo Bernardo, an outstanding goal um, from Kyogo. And uh, there's Brendan Rogers and uh, Rio Hitati on a nice wee embrace in the middle of the pitch. Hitati back playing, he's now away on international duty for the rest of the month. But Celtic's in a good place, Paul. And now what they need to go and do is go and do proper business in the transfer market in the next four weeks. Now, either he can speak great ja Japanese, <laughs> Brendan Rogers, or Rio Itati has been his English um, is or maybe really they both speak good. Spanish. 
oh, oh, well done. Good thinking, Andy Walker. See, <laughs> senor. That's it. He's, he's too bright, isn't it? Happy sombra. <laughs> As an old manager said to somebody, trouble you, son, is all your brains on your head. <laughs> it, was, it was the old uh, Hibs manager. There's uh, the results today. Hibs and Motherwell 2-2. Hearts winning 2-1 at Livy. Rangers 3-1 against Kilmarnock. Aberdeen winning 3-0 at Ross County. And as you've just heard... Celtic winning 3-0 at St Mirren. The Dundee-St Johnson game was postponed, which has been a theme of this season. Andy, this has been the case since August. It used Dens to be one, Park. Of, yeah. one of the great yeah. pitches, Dens Park and Dundee, yeah. but obviously a problem when any water hits it now. And in the Championship, Dundee United winning 3-0 at Arbroath. Wraith Rovers keeping up their run. 2-1 win against Dunfermline. Partick Thistle, Thistle winning the Derby. 3-2 against Queen's Park. Airdrie 2, Inverness 0. Morton 3, Air United 0. Guys, uh, we'll just look at yeah, the, the, the table, yep. Paul. You know, Celtic have got sixteen games yep. to go. Rangers have got eighteen games to go. If they win their two games in hand, it's a two-point lead at the top for Celtic. Paul, we've got a brilliant title race on. We have got a brilliant title race on when we come back after the winter break. All to play for, all to look forward to. Andy, Mark, thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Enjoy Paul, that winter break. break. We're back soon. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Global Eco Energy are your renewable energy specialists. Working with Eco4 and Home Energy Scotland to offer grants and funding, we specialise in heat pump, solar and battery installations, as well as internal, external and cavity wall insulation. Prices starting from as little as £4,995 for solar PV and from £8,995 for a heat pump installation. For a free quote, free survey, and to find out more about grants and funding options, call 0800 233 5788.